Instrumentals have always played quite a role for the Beatles. The Beatles even gave it a go in 65 during the Rubber Soul sessions with 12 bar original, drawing inspiration from the instrumental Green Onions by Booker T and the MGs from 62. However, this recording never went anywhere. Flying was an instrumental that we needed for Magical Mystery Tour, Paul reveals. So in the studio one night, I suggested to the guys that we make something up. I said, we can keep it very simple, we can make it a 12 bar blues. We need a little bit of a theme and a little bit of a backing. I wrote the melody. The only thing to warrant it as a song is basically the melody, otherwise it's just a nice 12 bar backing thing. It's credited to all four, which is how you would credit a non song. Though it didn't exactly take the world by storm, Flying, a sleepy tune adorned with pseudo-Indian melismas and some great Mellotron by John, did make the cut in Magical Mystery Tour and had some radio airplay. A lot of disc jockeys found that this ethereal tune was perfect to pass the time before the hourly news. Since there were no words, talking at the same time or pausing the song mid-song didn't seem disrespectful. If you call me up at 555-2160 and say you won't hear anything but the Reynolds, I'm gonna come looking for you. I mean it, because it's Reynolds Day, they're gonna be here tomorrow talking about their trousers. Flying received a lot of airplay due to the radio formats of the day, even though it never charted in any way. On September 8th, 1967, the Beatles went into EMI Studio 3 to record Aerial Tour Instrumental, which was then the working title for Flying. Take 6 was deemed best, with Paul on bass, George on guitar with a prominent tremolo effect, John on organ and Ringo on drums. Curiously, Take 6 was followed by 30 seconds of fast-paced traditional jazz style recording with a saxophone that apparently came straight off one of the tapes in John's Mellotron. The vocals in the third verse, which essentially only consist of la la las in the imitation of John's Mellotron section in the second verse, were then overdubbed. Jeff Emmerich reveals, Ringo's voice was the most prominent one on the chanting and that was done deliberately because Paul wanted a different kind of vocal texture. I simply lifted out a few minutes of the best bits, they added a number of overdubs and the song was complete. From the outset, it was always meant to be just incidental music for the film, so nobody wanted to spend a lot of time on it. 